this is where it all started. Um, this is where Carrot lived with his dad, Mr. Bennett, the farmer, and a farmhand called Sam, Hexwood Farm. And this is where Carrot first met Cat Weasel 30 years ago. It's 29 years since I was here. It doesn't seem to have changed a lot. And being here with Robin, with Carrot, it's quite an experience. It was no more than my agent saying, Geoffrey, uh, they've rung and they want to know if you're free for 52 weeks. And I went, oh, heaven, uh, to play an old man. Oh, I said. And eventually, I, I never read a script. I just said, no, tell them too long and too old. Then later came Cat Weasel. And despite the fact that in the meantime I'd been quite often very out of work and I began to wonder whether I made a dreadful, dreadful mistake in saying no to Doctor Who, when I read Cat Weasel, I knew that was what I wanted to play and probably wouldn't have got it if they remembered me as Doctor Who. So that was it. Well, my brother-in-law had a, a farm down in East Sussex, you see, in Turkey Farm, and we'd spent the weekend with him. We, I said, don't let's go back the direct route. Well, I think it was actually Annie's idea. Right. Let's sort of meander back. So we meandered and got lost yes, yes. <laughs> completely. <laughs> and uh, we stopped, uh, sort of looking around, and there was a gate. Uh, I don't know whether it was an entrance to anywhere or whether it was just <laughs> a gate, but it had Cat Weasel written on it. Right. Um, and I was just intrigued by the word. And from the word came the character uh, and uh, of a magician. It seemed a good name for a magician. And then I found, I had a, a book of sort of details from the National Gallery, and I found a picture. And it was this old man with a big conch and little beard. And he was a magician, actually. The first time I heard about it, it had no title, of course, it was just Richard Carpenter saying to me, I've written something, and if it comes off, it'll be marvellous part for you. And then months went by, and one day my agent said she'd just received a script and instead of being cool as agents are she just said Geoffrey I've just read a script and I think it's yours if you take it uh, and I've just read the first page and it's magic. I was at a stage school and um, from there we were sent out for auditions and work and so before Cat Weasel, I was in a film called If, and a series for the BBC called Blanding's Castle with Ralph Richardson. But I suppose the highlight of my youth started in this barn 30 years ago. I auditioned, I was sent along by my agent, and I can remember the audition quite well with Geoffrey. I didn't read a script as far as I remember, and I, I don't remember whether there were other people there, but the script called for me to repeat whatever Geoffrey said, and he held a damkos, which is the dagger, under my nose, and I simply repeated. Um, but he ended his speech with a ta 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 and I ta 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 um, and that was it. One day, in the second episode, I think it is, when I'm in a cupboard, and Carrot smells me out, because I'm hiding in the cupboard, in the wardrobe. And he opens the door, and suddenly I went, <laughs> or something equally idiotic. Whereupon the wonderful Quentin Lawrence, the director, said, you know, Jeffrey, I, I like these silly noises. I think they work. And eventually, they were scripted, in that it probably just said, 
cat weasel fizzes. He invented all sorts of things. He invented this cha 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 thing, which is which is marvelous. And um, oh, there's so many things in the character as portrayed by Jeffrey that he brought that he he created and 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 brought to it. You know, I was very very lucky to get him. Uh, he made it. That window has to be that window there. That's or right. is it? Where's this bit? Where's Neil? I mean, obviously he's got his his. That's obviously here. Yeah. But we've got Neil's got the uh, um, tissues around his neck to stop the makeup getting on his costume. <laughs> so obviously we're just talking. So it must have been here. Neil and I were great friends. Um, Neil had a, a childlike quality about him. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, as a 15-year-old, he would... He'd mess around with me. He was very difficult. He'd make me laugh a lot. But he was fun. He was great, great fun. Um, sadly, he died a few years ago, and, and, and I miss him. And I wish he was here today, as I wish everybody else was. But. Especially Neil. Neil, the gentle giant. He spoke Greek. He could play Bach. He was a, a mass of surprises. And then he had this terrible illness that took him away from us. Charles Tingwell, Bud Tingwell. Um, he was an Australian, as most people know. I, I can remember the first time I saw Charles Tingwell. He'd been in a, a very famous series called Emergency Ward 10. And so I knew his face very well and was slightly in awe of Charles Tingwell. Everybody called him Bud. It took me a long time before I had the courage to call him Bud, though, I must admit. Um, a nice man, you couldn't, couldn't wish for better. A lovely, warm man, gentle, lots of humor, and love playing dad as everybody did that, that, that's one of the things about the piece the permanent company just reveled in it as indeed did the crew there was a a childlike atmosphere of enjoyment from everybody this is my shoe and a thing of beauty is a joy forever <laughs> and here it is. That pocket is for Touchwood. Well, Touchwood is his familiar spirit, and his familiar spirit was a toad. Quentin Lawrence, who was directing it, came up to me and said, does he have to be a toad? You know, can't he be a, a rather furry little animal, a nice furry little animal? And I said, no, that would be completely wrong. Uh, he has to be something that, that some people f find sinister, and certainly people in, uh, in medieval times found sinister. I think it was because Q didn't like toads, but he got to like him. I mean, he got very fond of of uh, Touchwood and, and his various understudies. Uh, Touchwood is a, an amazing invention, an idea, my familiar. And at first he was a dreadful trouble because, quite understandably, he didn't understand what he had to do in certain shots. And usually he turned his rear end to the camera just when we wanted the close-up of the throbbing face. One day, however, he did. He was turning the right way and he got so intrigued with the camera, he walked up the funnel and put his hand on the lens. Since then, there was no holding him back. He became a big ham. I was sent away to a, a, a very smart Mayfair hairdresser called Steiner's where I had to sit with lots of old ladies and bearing in mind I was 15 and self-conscious, having my hair dyed red. 
On the way home, I remember, um, I couldn't walk home from the station, and I had to ring my dad because I was so embarrassed. But then I got used to it. Um, but I, yes, the script called for a redhead, hence the name Carrot. Um, I can't say I enjoyed being a redhead that much. <laughs> I live in a little community with lots of children, and at 5.30 on a Sunday, they used to be even rushing past me on certain occasions because they wanted to go in and see Cat Weasel. And throughout the, the, the run, the 13 episodes, I had hardly any attention whatsoever because they didn't connect me with Cat Weasel at all. Later, when I did other parts on television, people say, he's the person who played, you know, in Cat Weasel. It was very funny. My father bought a colour television, in honour, specially. Uh, we'd had a, a black and white bush up till then. But no, he went out and bought colour telly so we could watch Cat Weasel. Once the series was, was screened on, on the Sunday afternoon, I, you hoped it would be successful, but I had no idea that, that how successful it, it was going to be. And, and the way to gauge that really was, was the fan letters, which came in by the sackfuls. It came so much at the right time. It was uh, at the time of the kitchen sink drama. Uh, everybody was in rebellion, children were rebelling against their parents, being with it and all that. It was that period and entertainment had become harder, more real uh, as they thought. Uh, but they'd missed something, and what they'd missed, Cat Weasel had. Magic. I think it's, it's incredibly well written. Um, as a father of three children, I'm tired of, of cartoons, American cartoons and the Americanization. We do it very well over here. We've got great writers, we've got great actors. It's a good all-round series. It's magical, it's amusing. It's British, and I, I think it's timeless. And though I'm very proud to say, yes, I was Carrot, I lay the success of the series down to Geoffrey Belden and Richard Carpenter initially, and to the crew who worked on it. Very much changed uh, my life and Annie's life. Um, I became a writer. I mean, that was a big change, because I'd been an actor up to then. And... Um, I went more or less straight from Cat Weasel to, um, to Black Beauty. And uh, I, I, I never acted again, really. No. We relied on the, the magic of the story and the humour that comes out of someone seeing the 20th century with 11th century eyes. <laughs>